Hey, good morning, new life on this rainy day. I hope everyone's having a good day. Uh, I'm just going to be giving you guys some time to be able to uh, log on there. <clears throat> and uh, my allergies aren't the best today. Um, as soon as it starts getting warm, like spring-like, the flowers like to go ahead and start um, blooming a little bit. But uh, I should be all fine there. So uh, I'm just going to be waiting for a couple of moments here for um, everybody to be able to come on. Um, so I just want to be give some time there for everybody um, to come on there. Um, all right, there you go. There's my wife. She's on now. Um, right now, I got the internet working. I don't know why I was going crazy on my phone, but we're good. Um, but we're all set there. I'm going to give it a moment there. Um, I was able to watch the Eagles draft. It was nice. The Eagles got some good players. Um, I don't follow the Steelers because... I'm not even sure if the Steelers even got their QB to replace Mason Rudolph or something. I don't know. Um, it's going to be some time until the Steelers are good again. <laughs> um, but Ben Roethlisberger, I mean, if he stays healthy, he's getting up there in age. We'll have to see how he does there. So we'll give it a couple moments here until we get going there. Hope everyone's having a good Sunday, good week. Um, it's been a, not too crazy. We had a good day yesterday. The guys were able to get out uh, before it rained in the evening there. Um, it was nice and sunny out. It was good to take a walk. Um, I've been trying during this quarantine uh, period to take more walks because um, I need to get healthier, but at the same time, um, I like my coffee, so I'll be still be drinking my coffee um, until the day I die. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> all right, so we're going to go ahead and um, uh, get started there. Hey, Gary and uh, Gary and Goldie, hope everyone's going, doing good there. Go Steelers. Oh, I'll, I'll pray for you, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you know, actually, just want to let everybody know, too, um, uh, that, you know, um, the Eagles were in the Bible, you know. Uh, you don't see the Steelers in the Bible at all. Um, it says to fly on wings like eagles. Yeah, I know. See, the, the Eagles were in the Bible. Um, you don't really hear about the Steelers much in the Bible. So if you guys can find a scripture where the Steelers in the Bible, let me know there. Hey, good morning, Mike. Nice to see you, brother. I know you guys are not going to let me, uh, not let me uh, live that down there, but uh, I'll always be an Eagles fan. If you guys see, uh, saw on Facebook, my daughter, she's turning into a very good Eagles fan. She knows the Eagles chant, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, so uh, I know all you guys are like, oh, we got to save them. Oh, no, I'm all saved. I'm already set. I'm trying to steal. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, yeah, I get it. Thou shalt not steal. I didn't even think about that until earlier. Thou, yeah, but it's S-T-E-A-L. It's not S-T-E-E-L. Um, yeah, you guys are tr going for a stretch here, okay? Going for a stretch. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, what will we see here? Let's go, Eagles. My kids don't like this. <laughs> awesome. Oh, yeah, I got some, some more Eagles fans here. I, I'm good. Um, I, I am fine with that. Hey, it's nice to be able to see you, Shannon. Awesome to see you guys this morning. Um, uh, we'll see what else we got here. Oh, Steel. <laughs> that's pretty good. Steel. Yes, yeah, Steeler. There we go. Um, no, actually, that, that's more like the Patriots' name. The Patriots are known for stealing. We'll, we'll have to call them the Steelers. Um, so... Uh, yeah, um, but uh, we're going to go ahead and get started there, go into a time of worship. Um, let's open up here with the word of prayer, and then we'll be able to go ahead and get started there. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for bringing us all together here, Lord God. I pray that um, we'll be able to just be able to let go and let you be able to take control, Lord Jesus. And um, God, I just can't wait to be able to uh, 
uh, be on that day when I'll be able to be in heaven and be able to worship with all the angels all around and be able to see you where you are the center of everything, God. And God, I just pray that we'll be able to worship you with a uh, with abandonment, be able to just give everything over to you, Jesus, that um, we'll be able to just let go and let you um, take control of Jesus. We just thank you for everything, Lord. Uh, we know you are still in charge. You're still on the throne, and we're going to keep on believing that, Lord. We just thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen, amen. All right, let's worship.
serve God, but you still give it to, God, to it to us, God. You love us so much, so unconditional, Lord, that we don't deserve it, Jesus, but we, you still give it to us because you want that relationship with you, God. But I pray that as we believe in your goodness, that we'll keep on loving you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. I pray that we'll keep on worshiping you, God, through anything that goes on through our lives, Lord. Do anything that goes on in our lives. That we won't give up, we won't let up, we won't shut up until your name is known throughout the whole world, Jesus. Even in the hard times, God, I, I can tell, I can notice that people look at us the most when we're going through the hard times. Not when we're going through the good times, but they watch us the most and see how much our character builds when we're going through the hardest of times, Jesus. I pray that during this time we just come to your altar and we leave everything at your feet, Jesus. That we leave everything at your feet and not worry what's going to be going on outside of these walls, outside of our houses. And just say, God, I lay it all down before you, Jesus. Because you are in control. And we just leave it before you, God. I pray that we'll be able to live a life of abandonment to you, Jesus. Thank you, God.
have to be here in the church to lay it down at the altar. You can have an altar right now in your room right now. All you have to do is be able to get on just get on one knee. Or if you can't get on your knees, just be able to sit in your seats right now and just lift up your hands to him right now and say, God, I give it all to you, Jesus. I come into the altar and lay it all down before you, Lord. Just that every care, every worry just go to the side right now. It says to be able to cast your worries on him because he wants to carry them for you. There's no point in you carrying these burdens when Jesus has died on the cross for you to take care of that for you right now. As you sing this one more time, just lift up your hands and be able to just Give it to God and say, Lord, I need you to take control of this. It can be any situation, any situation right now. If you can't do that, if you're watching here in public or something, just close your eyes and just take it in and say, God, I need you right now. Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was brought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was brought with precious blood of Jesus Christ come to the altar the Father's arms are open wide forgiveness was brought with precious blood of Jesus Christ by my blood Lord Lord, we give it all to you, Jesus. Give it all to you, God. God, as we sing this next song, Lord, that we would have such a peace that instills in our, in our minds and in our bodies that we'll be able to say, God, whatever you, whatever you do right now. I'm at peace, God. We thank you, Lord. Just sing this song here with me. Sing it as well. When peace like a river Yeah. 
pray that we'll be able to see that to you, God. Even the worst of times, it is well with my soul, because you are, you're still right beside me, comforting me, God. And peace, like a river, be able to just calm me down, Lord. that we'll be able to just say it as well even through the good times and the bad times God the writer of that song he lost so much he lost his whole family out at sea and when he was going out there to the same spot where they said where his family was lost he went ahead and wrote this song that we'll be able to be where what he was like saying it is well with my soul that God you are still in control God Lord we thank you for everything God I pray that we'll be able to 
give everything you got and say that you're in control of everything, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Hope you guys were blessed by that there. Um, before we go any further, I'd like to uh, do our tithes and offering. Um, so just wanted to let you know there's three different ways you can give. Um, you can give in the mail to our address. Our address is on the Facebook page of 1518 Storystown Road. Um, then you can give online um, at www.agnewlife.com. Just click the giving tab and be able to give you to a link. You click that link, be able to bring you to where you can give. Or you can, if you're uh, comfortable with the text to give, you can do 84321. Just put that in the two box and in the message, just put the amount we'd like to would give and it'll bring you step by step on what to do. Um, you'll just have to uh, find um, our church, just put New Life of Some of God Freedoms PA, you'll be able to find it there. Um, so let's go ahead and pray over our tithes and offering. Um, and uh, we're believing for God to be able to just come through. Um, we're just believing here at the church. Um, I mean, as the church, I mean, we, we have bills to pay too, all of us do. Um, but we just got to believe that God's going to come through these hard times. Um, but um, we're seeing a light at the end of the tunnel here. And uh, I can't wait there. So let's go ahead and pray over our tithes and offering. To Heavenly Father, we just thank you for bringing us all together here, Lord Jesus. I pray that we'll be able to lay everything at your feet, Lord God. We just thank you for so much that you've been doing, God. I pray that this, these tithes and offerings be able to be a sweet incense to your throne room, Jesus. We just thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, amen, amen. Um, usually a little bit early, we try to do um, a meet and greet, but uh, it's kind of hard to do meet and greet when you don't have uh, many people here to be able to do that. Um, so um, I cannot wait uh, to be able to see you guys. Um, it's been really weird. Um, uh, some days I do have some people here, sometimes I don't. Um, uh, and uh, so it's, it's weird. A lot, most of the time, I'm preaching to empty seats, um, so it's a little bit different. But uh, we'll get through this. Um, if everything works out, I'm not going to make any promises. But um, if everything works out, uh, I'm hoping we might be able to have a service outside. Um, we just can't have an FM transmitter. I'm hoping if it's clear next week, um, I'm checking with some friends of mine to see if I might be able to use their mobile. Um, uh, speaker system you might be able to have it outside. I can't use the FM transmitter because of, of, of why we're so close to because we're so close to the airport there. I want to play be safe than sorry. Um, so we might be able to have it next week. Um, I'll keep you guys updated. Um, I'm not going to make any promises because I don't know. It's I'm doing everything by ear. Okay, so we'll see what happens there. And if everything works out, um, we might be able to have an Easter egg hunt in June. Uh, maybe the last uh, weekend of June, maybe June 27th. I'm not promising that because I really don't know if that's going to happen or not. Um, when we get closer with uh, how uh, Governor Wolf is doing these reopenings in certain areas, uh, we'll see. Um, yes, and you guys, uh, my wife just reminded me, you guys, if you want... Um, you can actually access our, my sermon notes today on the YouVersion app. Um, there's a way you can access those. My wife put the uh, instructions on there on, on the comments section. She just found that out for all of you guys. It it's, uh, has the sermon notes and the scriptures and everything. Uh, so if you guys would like for you to follow with us for the sermon notes, you can do that too. Um, so, and an awesome thing too happened, uh, Walmart yesterday donated hundreds and hundreds of Easter baskets um, that we can be able to give out to the kids uh, when we'll be able to have the Easter egg hunt. Um, it's all up in, up in the kids' church room. Uh, my back is killing me because there's so many uh, Easter egg baskets I had to go ahead and bring up to the second floor. Um, but uh, they all look really nice. They're in really good condition. Um, so we got we got a whole bunch there that uh, I'm just saying if, we, if we'll be able to have it in June, uh, probably every kid will be able to have an Easter basket. Um, so that's going to be really nice there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started into uh, my sermon today. And uh, a lot of my sermons I've been doing is actually just doing uh, just doing my devotionals um, in the morning. Um, so it's been really awesome to be able to uh, dig deep 
And um, I, you're saying, well, Pastor, don't you have the sermons always just pop into your head all the time? Um, n- not all the time, okay? But sometimes I've got to pray and just, you know, do some devotionals, really dig in deep there. Um, uh, Joanne, it's nice of you to see you there. Um, so it's just been um, really, really awesome there. So uh, the t- title of my sermon today is uh, Making Time for God. And um, it, it, it's pretty interesting. Um, a lot of people are trying to keep themselves busy during this time, you know, with projects and stuff. And uh, uh, some of you are at home in quarantine, or some of you are not. Some of you are really busy because you're an essential worker. Um, uh, we have a lot of health healthcare workers that have really been putting in a lot of time, um, a lot of overtime. I know some guys that uh, work in the healthcare industry were shipping out stuff, and and uh, he's doing a lot of time just. You know, uh, with trying to get the healthcare supplies out there fast enough, um, but it's just been really, um, but it's been really interesting. But uh, all of us can try to be able to make time, be able to really spend some time uh, with God there. I want you, if you have your Bibles there, uh, open up to yeah, Ephesians uh, chapter five, verses uh, fifteen through seventeen, and this is in the NIV version, and. Um, this is what Paul says to the, to the Ephesians there. He says, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. I really like how Paul says it here because even Paul, okay, when he had his moments where nothing was working out a lot of times, he still made time to talk to God. Okay, and sometimes when, when things are going wrong, things aren't going the way we want them to go, and um, we're putting our trust in the government, and um, I'm sorry to give you guys a, 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 you know, a, a bad pill to swallow here, but the government isn't always going to save us. Um, actually, a lot of the times, I feel like the government makes things worse. <laughs> um, but the one thing I know, the one person I know I can go to is God, because He makes all things good, he makes all good things right and perfect for us. Now, a lot of times we make our decisions on our own. We feel like we're making them in our best interests, and we don't even go to the person that knows everything's good, that knows everything for us. We don't even go to the source, which is God, but we try to make the decisions for ourselves. And then we wonder why we're in a hole that we're in today that we're trying to dig out of. It all starts with trying to make time for God. So the question we should be asking all of us is, why should I be making time for God? Why should I be making time for God? My first point is, if you guys are ready, if you have a pen and paper, or if you want to write it down on your iPad or or anything like that there, my first point is, time is short. So why should I make time for God? Because time is short. I remember uh, uh, when I was in kids' church, and they, and they were kind of letting us know just how your life is so short. And they put a yardstick, and then they got a permanent marker, and they just, they just colored in an inch. And they said, all right, that's your life right there. You're within an inch of a yardstick, okay? And everything else is eternity. So whenever, whenever Paul was saying, whatever you bound on earth will be bound in heaven, meaning what, the way you live today, right, the way you live right now for God is actually going to affect eternity when you meet Jesus. You're probably saying, well, that's not fair. No, no, it's completely fair because, for instance, let's give, let me give you an example here. Let's say you're playing, you're in a... Uh, you're in the Super Bowl, okay? Your team's on the field, all right? And one of the best players that's on the field right now, he decides, mm, I'm just going to sit back, and I'm not going to go ahead and try to play my best here. I'm just going to lay back here, okay? I'm getting paid millions. I'm not going to go ahead and put in the work here, all right? So he doesn't put in the work, all right? He doesn't try to put his best foot forward, and then all of a sudden, his team doesn't win, now he's mad. He's mad at his coach. He's mad at his players. But he didn't put all of his effort in. 
they maybe could have won if he did put his best foot forward. It's the same thing in life. If you don't put your best foot forward in life right now, making time for God, it's going to affect you for eternity. I would hate to be able to be the person to tell God, I really didn't live for you as much as I wanted to. I was just living in the here and now when we should be living for something that's so much more past life, eternity. I like what Paul says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 through 31. He says here, What I mean, brothers and sisters, is that the time is short. From now on, those who have wives should live as if they do not. Those mourn as if they do not. Those who are happy as if they were not. Those who buy something as if they weren't theirs to keep. Those those, who's, you, those who use the things of the world as of not engrossed in them. For in this world, in its present form, is passing away. So what Paul is saying is you got to live like there is no tomorrow. you got to live because you know, time is short. You, be able to, you look at people that have passed on already. You think, did they really live their lives to the fullest? I want to be able to have that on my tombstone and say, it says, Micaiah lived his life to the fullest. He was a risk taker. He lived it out. And I granted, my wife, she's watching right now, she tells me i got to be careful because I like to take risks. Okay? I was talking to my stepfather and they're working on a whole bunch of motorcycles and stuff. And I was trying to talk to my wife. I said, like, hey, you know, maybe I can get a motorcycle sometime. And she's like, oh, no, not until the kids are out. Then you can get a motorcycle. So he wants me to be in their lives. I'm like, okay, all right, fine. I'm a risk taker. That's how I am. But I want to be able to live my best and fullest life. So I want to be, be, be there for my kids, too. So time is short. That's the first point there. Second point is, it sounds pretty simple, but second point is you'll never know what tomorrow will bring. I like what James says here in James chapter 4, verses 13 through 15 in the NIV version. He says, now listen. You who say today or tomorrow will go to this or that city where spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. Why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. It said you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. Pretty much what James is saying there. Hey Hannah, what's up? Pretty much what James is saying here is that we've got to live our lives to the fullest. We never know what tomorrow will bring. Now I try my best. I'm not perfect, but I try my best to live my life to the fullest as much as I can. I try to go ahead and balance. It's a balancing act, honestly. Uh, for me, being a bivocational pastor, uh, trying to be a pastor, trying to work at the bank, trying to be a husband, trying to be a father. And I'm, I'm balancing all these different hats. And i got to be honest with you, there's days where I just feel like my mind's going to just blow. Okay? And there's moments I just got to relax and say, okay, God, i gotta just, I got to be able to honor you in everything I'm doing right now. To be able to live life to the fullest extent that I can. So number one, what we said is time is short. Number two, that you got to know that we will, uh, you will know, that you never know what tomorrow will bring. Number two is you will never know what tomorrow brings. So we got to live like there's no tomorrow. So what can we do? What can we put into action this week to be able to Remember that time is short and then live like there is no tomorrow. 
So this is what I want you guys to put into action here. Number to, the one action, uh, one action step I want you to take here is carve out a time for God and stick to it. Carve out a time for God and stick to it. A lot of times we, we try to put out, a, and, and you're probably saying, well, I'm not really good at you know, reading the Bible or anything. Like You can try the version apps. They have a whole bunch of devotionals that are very easy to read, okay? And, or, or, or even just taking time and just talking to God about what's going on with your day. Just carve out some time with him. Because I would hate to be able to go up to heaven and God said, Why? I wanted to spend so much time with you, but you would never put time aside to even talk to me. I wanted to talk to you, but you didn't even want to talk to me. I would hate to be able to say that to God when I go up to heaven and I was too busy. What were you busy with? I mean, I mean, trying to tell the God of the universe has made everything Everything in the whole universe has made your bodies. And, and, in the, and here's the crazy thing is, our bodies are so intricate, okay, that even the most brilliant scientists, the most brilliant doctors, are still trying to figure out the human body. And they're still actually finding new species of animals that they thought they knew, and then they find new species. And they find out new stars, new planets. And they're like, okay, I, 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 I mean, I gotta tell you, I don't, I, I can't see is it just everything coming together without a supreme being putting it all together. That's how I see God. And the God that you just be to spend time with Him and say, you know, I want to spend time with the person that's made me that has brought me into existence. Call out time with Him. This is what Jesus even said. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. This is in the Message Bible. And I love the way what Jesus did. Because Jesus says, he, Jesus knows about all the distractions in life. He knows about how it's hard to be able to get alone. He knows all about that. Because even Jesus, because he, he was so known, people are always following him everywhere. Okay? Everywhere. And he would actually get away from his disciples. The 12 disciples, he would get away from them. He would get away from the crowds, and he would just go alone and just talk to God. He would talk to his father. This is what Jesus says here in Matthew 6. He says, here's what I want you to do. This is why he's telling his disciples, says, find a quiet, secluded place so that you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will shift from you to God, and you will begin to sense his grace. Maybe just read that again. Here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will shift from you to God, and you will begin to sense his grace grace you probably seem i make you don't understand i have so many kids i don't have the time to be able to just you know what this is what i'm going to try to tell you to do here okay all right if you have a young one like i do that's two years old and you want to have a quiet try that quiet time when they're napping you're probably saying what yeah take advantage of it i remember when i was in the hospital with a lady and, and joy and they said, uh, what you want to do is if you want to catch up on sleep, you sleep when they sleep. Okay, now by this time, uh, around two or three, they start sleeping a little bit better, mostly throughout the whole night. Unless you have a really good baby, they, really, they do it earlier. But t try sometimes when they're napping during the day, and then just be able to take a break and say, okay, God, I'm just going to... I just want to listen. Sometimes we talk too much. Maybe just when you just put some worship music on, lay back and just listen. God, what do you want to speak to me right now? And then just try a devotional or something. Open up his words. See what he's going to be able to say to you. When you make time for him, let me tell you this here because I've noticed this. Whenever I do my devotionals and whenever I read my Bible and I, I make time, I feel so much more peaceful. I don't have as much stress. I feel so much more at peace with life then. Because here's the thing. You're going to the person 
Jesus, he is the God of all comfort. And then you have the Holy Spirit, who is the comfort that comes and gives us peace like no other. Try it out and see what happens. Carve out a time for God and stick to it. Because it will really benefit you. And at the same time, it's going to benefit God because he wants that relationship with you. So that's what I want you to be able to do here. To remember that time is short. And you never know what tomorrow will bring. And I want you to be able to put into action a carve out of time for God and stick to it. Because I felt more at peace during the times that I was able to just talk to God and just lay it all on him. And say, I don't know where the finance is going to come from. I don't know where um, the food's going to come from. I don't know where. And he just comes through then. I can guarantee you he will come through in those hard times. Before we go any further here, we're going to go ahead and pray. And um, if anyone is watching right now, um, if you have any prayer requests, um, and if you want to be able to put those in, I'll give it a couple of minutes here. Um, if you have any prayer requests that you would like us to be able to pray over um, here during the service, uh, you can just put it in the comments, um, and we'll be able to pray for you. Um, I'll give it a couple of moments here as you guys are typing. If it's something you don't want anybody to know, um, and you just want it to be private, uh, just put unspoken prayer requests in there. Um, and we'll be able to pray for you there. And if there's anything you want us to pray for regarding the country or your family or anything, uh, just put it in the comments there. And uh, we, would, we would love to be able to pray for you there. So I'll just give it a, a couple moments um, as you guys are um, just typing there if you have any um, prayer requests there. So um, we're just going to go into a time of prayer here soon. And um, we're just going to believe that God's going to come through for us and believe that um, these prayer requests are going to be, be answered um, as we pray here. And I, I pray that you guys be able to pray along with me um, with anybody that's going to be commenting um, here on Facebook because um, I believe in the power of prayer. I believe what it can do. Um, I believe that we can have the healing that Jesus did back then. We can have that healing today. Um, but all it comes down is to um, giving it to him and him having his way um, in our lives there. So if I, I don't see any... Okay, I don't see any um, prayer requests right now that I can see of. Um, so... Uh, as I as I get praying, I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and check the comments as I'm praying, and we'll go ahead and pray for anything. And I, I just pray that uh, we'll be able to live life like there's no tomorrow, because um, uh, I live that. I try to live it as much as I can. I'm not perfect in no way. Um, I mean, am I always afraid what's going to happen tomorrow? Uh, absolutely. Um, I, I can go blind my right eye any day. Um, they say if I see any flashes of light, that means I'm losing my sight. Um, I, I've already lost hearing my right ear. Um, but I'm still living life. I mean, I, yeah, do I have, I, have heart, I have heart problems too, but I'm still living life uh, to the fullest. And I'm not going to let it hold me back. I want to honor God in everything that I do. Um, so, we're going to go ahead and pray here, and um, I hope you guys will be able to pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for bringing us all together here, Lord God. I just pray for um, anybody that, um, that needs um, any prayer or any healing, Lord Jesus, or needs a miracle uh, financially, Lord God. I just pray that we'll be able to uh, lay it down at your feet, just like the song we sang earlier is be able to come to the altar, that we'll come to the altar and lay everything at your feet when it comes to anything, God. And I pray that during this time that we'll remember that we know that time is short and that we, we are never guaranteed tomorrow. God, I just pray that during this time here, Lord Jesus, that we'll be able to just carve out time to be able to, 
to spend time with you and, and to stick to it. And that when we start spending those moments of, 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 of time with you, that we'll start feeling a sense of just peace during these hard times, a peace that surpasses all understanding that we'll be able to come before you and say, God, have your way in my life, have your way in our family, have our way with our friends. And God, I pray for anybody that needs healing. It says in your word that by your stripes we are healed, God. And Lord, I just pray for Kay and Tim right now, Lord. Kay, she is in the, uh, she's actually just got done with brain surgery, God. And I just pray that you'll be able to uh, be with her, heal her as she's right now um, in, in the, uh, the nursing home for uh, re rehab right now. By God, I just pray you be able to heal her in the name of Jesus and heal her heart too. And that she wouldn't have to worry about it. I remember just talking to her on the phone, God, and she said, you know what, Pastor, I just feel at peace. And God, I just pray that the peace that she had, that we'll be able to feel too. Because that's what you give us. You give us a peace that surpasses our sin, and we wouldn't know what to say. But say, you know what, that's God. That's God giving me that peace. God, I pray for anyone that needs healing right now, that you heal them in the name of Jesus. And that they'd be able to experience such a powerful healing in their lives, God, that we'll be able to come before you and say, God, I need healing right now. And we'll be able to say it in faith that we believe God will come through for the healing, Jesus. And we just thank you for everything, God. I just pray that we'll be able to, we'll be able to see that victory through, that we'll be able to go ahead and come before you, God, and say, Lord, we're laying it at your feet now. And then there's nothing more I can do. But God, I just pray that we'll be able to carve out that time this week and be able to trust you through the hard times and give it to you and say, God, I don't know what else to do, but I'm going to just take a seat back. I'm going to listen to some worship, God, and I'm going to just worship music. I'm going to open it up to you, God, and just give it to you, Jesus. I pray that you'll be able to speak to them in such a crazy, clear voice that we wouldn't know what to say, but say we know it was you, God. I pray, I pray God, that there'll be testimonies and miracles during this week here and forever, God. We just thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, amen, amen. I'm just so excited. God bless. I hope you guys have a great week, a great Sunday. Um, and uh, be safe out there, guys. I can't wait. Um, uh, we, might be having, uh, we might be having service out in the parking lot next week. I'm making no promises, but we might be able to. I'll keep you guys updated. So uh, God bless. Thank you, guys. And if you could, um, if you guys can go ahead and share this on your page, share this as like a watch party, or even you can share it normally and just let people know uh, that we are, we are here together and we're not alone. And we just thank you, guys. God bless. Thank you.